Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Dark Souls 2. As it would turn out, like so many ops before me, I may or may not have forgotten to deliver. I promised I'd head back to Majula in order to spend some of my souls and Twinkling Titanite, and I completely blanked on that, so let's, let's handle that now. It's only going to be a few levels and enough to upgrade my boots, but it's certainly a worthwhile trip, especially because I don't want to be falling to gravity as often as I have been and have so much souls on me when I do. Again, I'm trying to get that little bit of dexterity that I'm going to need when I return to the base game and prepare to head on through the uh, actual game into the Shrine of Amana in order to get my Red Iron Twin Blade, so just want to get myself in a nice position there. I'm considering actually taking my strength all the way up to no, I didn't need this bonfire. All the way up to 50, just to get that little bit of extra scaling damage. Especially because I don't really have anything else that's going to need very many points, other than just heading past the soft caps on most of my combat stats. I'm going to come down here because I wanted to go over something that I kind of glanced over in the first episode in Shulva. I realized after the fact that I kind of just breezed past the uh, tree over in the secret area here in Shulva, and so I wanted to come back and give a little bit more of an explanation as well as just touch on it a little bit more than I did the first time through. I'm going to clear these guys just because they're going to be plinking away at me if I don't, and I don't want any of them to come up behind me. Come on in. And the lance hollows are easily the worst of any of the Sanctum Knights, just because they do that thrust attack that leaves them open for so terribly long. Let's see if I can. Uh, it's always a little bit tricky. There we are. I don't care about the poison because I can easily just heal that up. One more. No, that's not going to do it for me. Oh, let's see what this drop is. Just a human effigy. Still want to grab everything that they drop because, again, they have some chances at some really strange and fun loot. One more. There we are. Nothing. But if you remember properly, the one of the corpses in here actually dropped the notched whip plus seven. And while I don't have the stats for it, that's unimportant because it's really just there to kind of give you a hint. If you look at my bandit axe and blacksmith hammer, you can see that they have some damage on them. But if you take the time to use that notched whip here, you will actually emit a sort of repair powder that will heal your weapons and armor durability. It's... A very strange feature, especially because there there is no explanation for it. Uh, some people have postulated that this could be the spirit tree that shows up on the spirit tree shield, but we we really have no idea. It's just kind of a strange mob that FromSoft included in the game without any semblance of an explanation. Hopefully, they'll be a little bit something more on it later. But for now, it just serves as a nice uh, source of dried roots, as well as... I, I keep forgetting that I have the Homeward Bones equipped. But for now, it's just a source of dried roots, some souls, and a little bit of weapon healing mid-level. I'm still confused as to why it's there, but again, hopefully we'll get some answers a little bit later. Time to head on down through the Sanctum. I'm trying to remember exactly where I need to be going right now. I think that I'm going to head up through the doorway that is found at the very beginning of the Dragon Sanctum. That seems like the best idea at the moment, just because it's someplace that I can actually remember where I was headed from. Come on around. Always take the casters out first. 
because ranged opponents will always be the most difficult to deal with while you're clearing in melee. So it's just a quick little order of operations. While he's down, check if she gave any loot. She did not, and that's all she wrote. Goodness, they they really like dropping their crossbows, and they really don't like dropping their armor, which is a little bit frustrating because I already have both of their crossbows. Come on through. Oh, I can't come back through the to the beginning from this bonfire. Well, I could, but it would take some manipulation and a little bit of a trick jump, so I'm probably going to have to just return to the bonfire from here and... Oh! That's no good. Oh dear. Well, I'm returning to the bonfire, but this time because I was a little bit silly and wasn't actually rolling through their attacks, I thought I could get the third hit quick enough before his Sanctum Mace came out, and apparently I was wrong, so let's human up and fix that little mistake as well as remove the Najd Whip. At this point, that's just extra weight that I don't need to be carrying around. Come on around. Same clear as the first time, but this time I don't actually need to wait around for the drops because I'm going to be coming back this way anyways. Clink. Oh, he gets a quick shot off, but no matter. Come around, quickly dispatch him. No drops anyways. Still nice to at least just check. And now I try and get those souls back. I don't think I'm going to kill anything except for the mage, just because it's going to be a bit too risky and there's no point in sticking around. Just going to come right back down and homeward bone out. Hmm. Okay. I was wondering if I was actually going to pull it off in time or whether that Sanctum Knight was going to try and get a backstab on me. The bonfire I want is this one because that will lead me right into the front chamber where the locked door was. Now that I have the key from that... Uh, where did I get the key? Hmm. No, I don't quite recall where they dropped the key, but it's unimportant. Ow. Thought I had enough range on that, but apparently not. Heal that up as I drop down once again. Not like he did. I actually want to drop down onto the landing below. You can turn, but I'm still getting the backstab. Come in and kill this guy before he tries to follow me through. Poison Moss, that's nice, but... I should have that equipped, if I'm being entirely honest. There's no reason not to have it equipped at this point. Just because this is a fairly poisonous level, and you, you want to be able to combat that, if at all possible. These guys can pose a bit of a challenge if you're not being careful with your rolls, but you can actually just squeeze right past them while they're attacking, and that will almost guarantee you a backstab. Which, with any sort of real weapon at this point, i.e. not a dex weapon, you should be able to just one-shot them. Even if you can't one-shot their bigger brothers who are in here. Open this with the internal sanctum key. Okay, that's where it was. I w it's in the corpse room. Two quick blows and roll. They're a little bit tricky about how they set this up. But as long as you come right on over and take her out, you don't have too much to worry about. Oh, she's got a drop for me. Let's see what that is. There's a bunch of dried roots in here, as well as this chest, I believe, has something unique. Let's see. Yeah, the lightning clutch ring, which will lower your defenses, but also raise your lightning damage. Pre-patch, it might have been very useful, but since they, lerf they nerfed lightning spears so hard, it's not nearly as useful as it could have been. It's still pretty good for blinding bolt, but well, and heavenly thunder, but it's it's probably a pretty suboptimal ring for anybody who isn't dedicating really hard to 
casting faith spells. Come right on up. I don't actually know if it will increase the effectiveness of healing miracles, but I kind of doubt it, just because it's supposed to increase lightning damage, not lightning scaling. Come on through. Several of these guys will drop down, but you can make short work of them. There we have it. And come on through here. Wanna tag that bonfire before I do anything else. Balder, buddy. This is another guy with that infinite level of poise. Can I at least light the bonfire? I can. It's good. If he's just gonna sit there waiting for you to do something, feel free to get the backstab. I'm gonna Estus while he's down just because I know he's trying to get the Lloyd Talisman on me. As far as I know, he's the only Phantom who actively tries to use Lloyd Talismans, but I'm kind of okay. Oh! I don't really think that should have been a backstab, but I'll take it anyways. <laughs> I will take it. Activate that to start this elevator system running. And I believe I've already grabbed the loot out of the room below, so I don't... Do I? Yeah, let's head down it just in case I've forgotten a secret here, which I think I may have. Not necessarily forgotten, but just haven't grabbed it just yet. I believe this contains dark great sword as well as something else we we shall see you hop on over here you can okay some torches wasn't too terribly important but still something you want to grab just because it's there also there's going to be a few sconces you can light at the very top of this or at least at the top of the other side so it's just a little something nice for you well, and maybe, I don't know, you might need torches to light the path later on in the level, but I don't, I don't think so. I don't rightly remember. Oh, I didn't grab the loot, but here it is now. Ten rusted coins in case you really want someone's drop, and they're just being very recalcitrant. I'm going to come back up because I believe I missed a ladder in that first chamber that I came through to get here. So I want to head over there and make sure I've got that all taken care of because there may be something at the very top level there. Aside from the sconces, that is. I didn't rest at the bonfire, so none of the little skittering bugs should be back. And I can just head right on up. I like the design of the stone ladders. It's It really fits with the stone look of the place, and it's, it's just a cool aesthetic very angular and square. Okay, the Sanctum Shield, which can actually be... It's basically the shield version of the Ladia Blackstaff. It can, as far as I know, cast both miracles and sorceries. And while its scaling's pretty piss poor, it also double duties as a shield. So, let me just have a look at that and see the specifics. Sanctum Shield. Served as a catalyst for miracles and sorceries. Yeah. It's a very cool bit of loot. It allows you to be extremely versatile in what you're doing, even though it doesn't really have the stats to do anything well. It's really nice if you want to have some semblance of shield, keep your weight down, and still be casting utility spells like Chameleon or Heal Over Time spells. Rest here, and I've decided that I wanted to head down the path with the human enemies before I did anything else. They are a completely optional boss, but at the same time, this is an entirely optional DLC, so I don't really think that should speak to its fun or how much I really want to go through it. I'm not going to bother with any of these torches, just because I think the regular lighting's enough. They really didn't bother with 
the torch mechanic nearly as much in the DLC and I'm totally okay with that because I didn't like it in the base game at all so having them kind of play down its focus is A-OK -okay in my book come on through there should be oh the red eye statues will actually try and hit you with petrification but there aren't very many of them and they deal far less status affliction than the poison statues so they're they're really nothing to worry about as long as you're paying attention you should be able to avoid most of it without an issue come on through there's so many little trick passages and uh, dead ends that look like they should have loot in them in this area that I think it's really an area that's made to bait people like me who really just want to grab as much as possible. Also it sticks you down here with several of the Sanctum Knights but their moveset and patterns aren't really going to do them any favors in this very sort of constricting and claustrophobic environment. He's n playing nice and holding a torch for you, but the moment you start hitting him, he kind of gives up on that and decides to face you in pitched combat, which is a terrible idea, by the way. The AI should never try and face you in pitched combat. They will always lose. There's a pair of bright bugs, which really, really help on boss fights. I've started varying my route a little bit now that the merchant in Cardinal Tower, Malentia, actually sells bright bugs for 6,000. I found that if you just buy a single one of those, as well as the Lenigras key, you can spend 3,000 souls on whatever you want and not have to get the initial lockstone because you can just use the one out of, what's his face? out of Kale's mansion and at that point you can have a bright bug right from the start of the game that I prefer to save all the way up for the what boss is it? Um, Smelter Demon just because that boss generally gives me a little bit more struggle than most of the bosses here in Dark Souls 2. I do want to kill these guys just because there's an entire hallway of enemies here and the less I have to deal with those petrification globules that they're spewing everywhere, the better. Come on in for the backstab. The one bad idea about backstabs versus the poison ones is that it forces you to be exposed to their poison for that much longer. I really don't know why this is here, but it just kind of reinforces the uh, relationship between Shulva and Black Gulch. Which is really strange because I, I feel like Shulva is much closer related to Hyde. Not only for the Aztec themes, but also the sinking city beneath the waves, the corroded uh, citizenry. It's, it is a very, very similar level in terms of those sorts of themes. And the fact that it doesn't really have anything else that really links the two is a little bit frustrating from a lore perspective because I'm looking for all sorts of connections and I'm not really seeing much other than what I just listed. They feel like they were at least neighbors before Shulva sank. It is the sunken city, so it wasn't immediately... It probably wasn't underground during its conception. It is possible, but who can say? I'm just reading into the words that they've chosen to use. Grab this and immediately roll away. It's a little bit funny because it's an alluring skull and it's luring you into that trap with this statue here. But I, I still think it's pretty cool. Honestly, that is a really creepy statue. Never took the time to look at it properly, but I don't know why it's there or what it's doing, but it, it's just there to poison you some. Here we come to the boss fight that a lot of people take umbrage with, and myself included to at least a small degree. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say, but that's because I'm totally okay with 
having a boss that requires you to kite around the arena and focus on specific enemies first. Like, you will have the absolute dickens of a time if you're not trying to run around and play a very guerrilla style of combat. Because if you try to just face them all right at the same time, you just engage them all, then they, they probably are going to just wreck your day. But if you run around, constantly use your stamina, make sure to try and finish off this great bow wielder as soon as possible to remove their range threat, then you will have a much easier time of the encounter. Oh, I really just want that last hit, but he doesn't want to give it to me. There we go. Roll. Didn't have the stamina for the roll, but I can just get away and immediately Estus that back up. And that's already one out of three down. Next up, you want to take out the Afflicted Grave Robber, just because Havel has such defenses that he can be a real difficult nut to crack. Ranged attacks, always useful in this fight. So long as you can just keep backpedaling, especially because throwing knives don't take up stamina. They're a very good option. And the AI has difficulties dodging them. One more should poison him if he would stop moving. Okay. Don't want to deal with that. Estus up while he's still over there. Come back up. That at least did split them up. I believe Havel's now down here and the afflicted grave robber has been left up here. So that gives me some opportunities for some damage without having to deal with both. Roll away. Come on out. And now just a little bit more kiting. That's what this boss fight really is about, is kiting them around the boss chamber, avoiding damage, taking pot shots when you can, and making sure you just... It's a war of attrition. You can get the more predictive hits, they can get more damage off in their hits, so long as you're drawing out the fight, making sure you're taking as little fights as possible, then you should not have too difficult of a time of it. It's all about just drawing the fight out and picking your targets, picking your engagements, making sure that Havel never gets a backstab because he will absolutely crush you. And now that I've got him by his lonesome, I can really abuse his AI, do some roll backstabs, and... Oh! I should not have gone for that hit. There was no way I was going to stagger Havel. So, technically it's Ancient Soldier Varg. But who's, who's really keeping track at this point? It's meant to be Havel, or at least some strange incarnation of him. I want to save what few... Oh! Okay, how did that... What is... What is going on here? He keeps canceling his moves halfway through and coming out with a new attack. That's not... St Excuse me. Well, that's... That's something new. I'm all the way out of Estus. How's... How's that fair? Oh. That's... That isn't fair. <sighs> I never had this experience on my first time fighting through, but again, this is only my second attempt at this fight. So let's get some poison on Havel. Well, he's sitting over there. There we go. Now he's poisoned. That's some free damage. Bait out the attacks. Oh. Goodness. He has such stunlock capacity. It's ridiculous. They have difficulties navigating the terrain, so you can use that to your benefit and just befuddle their movement. Oh, I rolled too early on that. I should be able to kill him in two more hits, so... There we go. Somehow I got the stagger as well. But that's the fight for you. It is very cheap and very cheating, but... Eh. They needed to do something in order to try and make the game more difficult. I don't agree with how they went about it, but... Mm. 
There's, again, the NPCs that are supposed to be human in this DLC are just completely cheap. I don't agree with how they balanced any of it, and it's really frustrating, but that's the game that I'm playing. I wonder if I could make that drop. I can almost guarantee I could make that drop. Yeah. Yes, yes indeed I can. And that allows me to just come right on up here to rest the bonfire again. Let's see what else I have to do. Now it's just time to head on down through the Dragon Sanctum. Wait for this. Now the real trick is going to be remembering how to get to the Dragon Sanctum. To be entirely honest, at this point I don't really remember which direction I need to go, but if I look at the bonfires it should sort of tell me the general idea. Especially because there's three bonfires at each of the locations and one extra bonfire right before the final boss fight, so I can just tell. Okay, I've already unlocked all three in Shulva City, so the last one must be somewhere after the Lair of the Imperfect or down one of these side chambers from the Hidden Sanctum. Let me just think about it for a moment. I believe that it's actually uh, across the bridge that I activated after the Lair of the Imperfect, which actually has a shortcut from the first bonfire, so let's try that out. But before we do, <laughs> I noticed my soul count and was like, I don't really want to be facing these next enemies with a very large soul count. That, that honestly seems like a terrible idea. Let's, let's spend some of these souls before I head on through. They still have refused to give me an extra Titanite chunk, so I'm still waiting on that. I could get vi my Vitality all the way up, but I don't really want to take it too far past 28, because I like to leave it on even numbers, and after 29 it only raises by 1, so that's the soft cap there. Could start raising Strength, could get more Endurance... I think Vigor is going to be a good idea, especially because these next boss fights can be a little bit of a challenge. I'll try and get Vigor all the way up to 30, and then I'll start seeing what else I want to do with my points. Once more under the breach, Shulva awaits, and I refuse to keep it waiting. The one thing I do like about that area with all the red eye statues is that there's a lot of really cool and interesting loot around the area if you're taking the time to grab it all up which of course I did so it, it really appeals to me it's one of those areas where it's a little bit risk reward you can spend the time bothering to grab all the treasure and possibly petrify yourself or you can just head right on through to the boss fight and not really bother with most of that yeah the final area is across this bridge that we activated via the little stone wheel contraption down there with the dragon stone so it's just a quick shot through here and then we get to the falling puzzle of the DLC it kind of already in introduces you right there to the idea that yeah you're gonna be falling a lot that's that's kinda of the whole mechanic we have in mind for you so let's get used to that Right in here, you'll have your first encounter with the Drake Blood Knights. These cheating bastards. Infinite poise, like so many other enemies in the DLC. And a really impressive moveset. Hmm. I honestly should Estus right here. But I'm greedy. As long as I'm swinging into him, I should be okay. Oh! Okay, this is this is dicey. Really depends on who got the first hit. Oh. Yeah, I definitely needed that Estus. I would have failed that encounter otherwise. This is a little bit of a an interesting uh little puzzle. Strictly because you can see the Titanite lizards up there if you manipulate the camera just right. But the stone mechanism doesn't actually trigger on perfect quarters like the rest of it does. Oh, this th that's just a trap. You don't want to bother with that. Oh, goodness. I should get these two. Yes. You can see how the 
I knew that I wasn't going to get them, but you can see how the angled version of the hammer move set is extremely powerful. There's nothing actually in that chamber, it's just a bait for the crystal lizards. And this guy is just sitting there as a little bit of added frustration in that trap. So don't bother with him and you'll be pretty okay. Come on down here, run across, hop on down. This is one of the first real decisions in the area. You can choose to take that side or you can just drop right down here. I'm going to go on this side just because I believe that you can make it back as well as I want to make sure that I'm grabbing all the loot. Huh. I, I honestly don't remember where most of the loot is in this area. Strictly because I've only been here through here once before. And I, while I was trying to do a full clear, I didn't make notes of where everything was. Oh, come on! Give me the backstab at least, if you're not gonna let me break his poise. <sighs> These Drake Bloods. Worst enemy 2014. There we go. That was a little bit easier, but still, very, very annoying enemies to face just because of how they set up the mechanics of their fights. More hexing urns. It's the same 10 hexing urn drop that you get from earlier in the game down in the uh, Huntsman's. No, not Huntsman's, but Harvest Valley. At the very beginning, right before the first bonfire. I don't believe there's anything important on the other side of this. And I can come right back up it just in case so I'm gonna skip that for now come right on around there's gonna be a pair of drake bloods down there but you can aggro them one at a time if you make sure to not head all the way down the stairs he's gonna roll out I'm gonna roll behind him and we're gonna start trading hits but I have more stamina than he does so I come out ahead Estus up Gonna use a long distance? Yeah. The one-handed strong attack there was just for the extra distance because it has a little bit more range than the rest of the axes moveset, as well as I needed to get the first hit in order to... Oh, there we go. I was I was wondering if it was going to jip me of the guard break, but no, it, it decided to be fair about that. There we go. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a good engagement. Got a little bit of show off there. That makes me happy. This area, it's so frustrating. As a loot whore, seeing this entire room of chests just breaks my heart, knowing that I wasn't the one who opened all those up. It's so, so sad. Let's see, can we make it across there? I believe there's a uh, bonfire somewhere around here. Maybe I missed it back up here. Maybe I just am misremembering where it is. Yeah, it's right here. You can see by these little lines that there's well, something off. And what's really weird is that they actually disappear if you're looking at it from this angle. So I think that it actually has to do with the textures for this, these two columns here actually clipping through on this side so that if viewed from a certain angle it's completely invisible but if viewed from this side you can actually see the shadows so I don't know if it's intentional that those are there or not but I do know that they are a bit buggy and not necessarily set up to really tell the player that that's there but I know it's there so I can kind of ignore that fact I know I can make that jump. Well, let's see if I can make it right now. Yes, yes I can. And what does that get me? Frustration. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, there is a bunch of loot down here that I'm going to want to grab. Always want to come in from one of these sides on this encounter because there's two Drake Bloods in this hallway, one on each end. And if you come in at the middle, they can aggro at once and really set you off in a bad way. Mm. One backstab at this point should be able to get him, but 
I'm going to need to get the backstab first. And it doesn't want to give me it, but I can just keep swinging. There we go. Circle around to make sure that his shield isn't in the way, and then I just cut him down. Lots and lots of Twinkling Titanite here. They really heard the plight of the character in that Twinkling and Petrified Dragon Bones were very hard to come by in the base game, and the DLC makes up for that in spades. There's Twinkling Titanite, Petrified Dragon Bones, all in extreme quantities. Bop. That's the kill. More Twinkling. Just a soul. That's actually one of the worst items in the entire DLC right there. That singular soul just sitting there. Just because so much of the DLC is really great items and wonderful drops. I should have been switching around to my blacksmith's hammer for the certain moments in there just to make sure that I was distributing the weapon durability loss, but I didn't do that and so now I'm gonna pay the price. I don't believe that th poison throwing knives are gonna do me too good here, so I am actually gonna use a bright bug as well as a weapon buff just because I want to be able to beat this fight as fast as possible. If she decides to well, if this boss decides to do anything tricky, it can turn into a very dicey fight very quickly, and at this point, I don't want to deal with that because I'm already at half S discount. I just want to be able to cut her to ribbons as fast as possible. There we go. Some really nice early damage. She's going to teleport. Immediately cast hexes. Okay, she's nice. She's not going to summon Velstat just yet. If you haven't come against this fight, know that that's something she can do, and it is entirely f infuriating. Dodge that. Nope, dodge too early, but it's okay. We've kind of got her all the way down. Oh, that was not good, but I come out of it okay. Oh, I cornered myself there. That's not good. Now I need to kite and wait for her to catch herself in a swing. I still have my bright bug and my... Oh, run out of that. My weapon buff active, so I'm still dealing immense damage. That's an AoE. Want to get out of there. Take him out just because he's trying to come after me. And is this enough? Oh, it would have been if she hadn't moved. But she did, and then she hurt me. Okay, I have the bright bug. That'll be the kill. She can be an incredibly difficult fight, depending upon if she decides to summon Velstad or not. But she didn't, and so I had my bright bug and the weapon buff active in order to just cut her down to size. And that's almost all of the DLC for you. All that's left is this final chamber. Honestly, this is going to be the best idea to use my second bright bug on, so fingers crossed that I can take that out, but I'm going to save that. I'm going to save this, this next fight for next time. A little something to tease you all with, especially because I'm coming to the end of an hour, so I want to make sure this fight doesn't go on too long, and so I'm going to save it for next time rather than risking just dying repeatedly in front of you all. Let's head back to Majula and spend some of these souls, especially because this next fight is going to be the absolute dickens. So we just have that much less to risk, as well as we have some Twinkling Titanite to upgrade my armor even further with. Let's focus on that first, just so I remember. Reinforce armor. Now it's just the headgear and the gloves, and I should be able to get it all the way up to plus four. There we are. So, almost completely upgraded set of armor. Really ridiculously high defenses. It used to be even higher before the patch, but they buffed the poise to compensate for that. And now I just get a few more points in whatever I want. Hmm. Let's just pump vigor as high as possible. That's a hundred extra HP I'm gonna have for the next fight, and... Oh, what a fight is it going to be. 
I've activated all the bonfires. I think I've headed down all the loot paths, grabbed up everything important, and I should be ready to just complete the DLC when next I choose to record. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>